Uh, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. It's a great pleasure to... Uh, uh, this is a very quick, cursory look because it's another area which, is, uh, uh, which needs, needs looking into. Uh, many people talk about science, uh, uh, the conventional algebra, um, uh, chemistry and so on, but the, 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 the industry uh, and, and particular engineering, it looks like it needs a bit of care and, and attention. So again, you know, there's this sort of famous slogan that we're using, 1,000 years missing from, from industry. And because I'm a professor in mechanical engineering, so I think I have a little bit of uh, uh, perhaps uh, a claim that I can talk with a bit of comfort in here. But frankly, uh, I'm still very uncomfortable about it. Because uh, being brought up, in my, most of my education life was in this country. Uh, since 1960, I've been involved in university work. And, uh, and uh, I think that uh, perhaps one uh, needs to speak about perceptions. Because I was brought up, as I said, in the academic world here, yeah, and engineering. And, and there are certain things that we learn and we're told about how the whole sort of industrial uh, process has taken place, industrial revolution and so on. I think needs to be re-examined. So in this quick uh, paper, I'd like to look at four things. One is uh, the kind of perceptions, uh, then uh, have a quick overview of the industrial and engineering processes that uh, uh, sort of uh, precedes uh, the industrial revolution, which is, again, it's, it's the, what we call the dark ages, but it's not quite a good name, actually. It's towards the end of the, uh, the, the medieval period. Uh, and then, uh, I'd like to sort of uh, point out that there is an Islamic antecedent of many of the modern industrial processes and products that we have today, which I seem to have discovered. Very much like the women's story, I'd like some help, because I'm not really a very great expert in it, but I've just collected some information. And then uh, I'd like to really uh, uh, sort of uh, bring out this erroneous opinion that, that industrial production uh, was alien to say to Islamic society. I think that we seem to discover that this is not quite right at all. Right, let's uh, see. Um, the current perception is, is that, uh, uh, it, that it all started from the Industrial <coughs> Revolution. Every kid, every graduate, they all know about the Industrial Revolution. There's something happened in this which is named as such. Is it sort of, uh, before it, there's something else, and after it, there's this progress and the, the, the power of mass production. And hence, what we have now in terms of cars, in terms of mechanical industry, and, 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 and so on. And then, then, of course, there is the, the that the Greek and Roman industry diminished and neglected, and, and uh, we don't seem to know anything about what they had in the industrial processes. And did they have them or not? Um, it seems that, again, in the Dark Ages, they seem, we seem to have no industry development. And there is something very dangerous which has seemed to have propagated through what I have read. And that is giving you the impression that, that non-Europeans, they're not really, they don't have the capability of <coughs> mass production industry. That is very worrying, right? There's some interpretation that has been alluded to that are subliminal messages, as if this is something which is quite peculiar to the European European civilization. So uh, uh, and I'd like to have a quick uh, sort of this, this, this is all, I use this graph all the time because once you see it, it sticks in your mind and it tells you that there is a gap. Whether it is in science, which was originally, this was split, uh, done and drawn for, but I, I think it is also applicable to industry. There seemed to be a big jump between what the Roman industry had. They had some good industry actually. And then what we have, we call the, 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 the sort of post-Renaissance period, and that is the industrial period. Um, and and uh, it, all it says really that uh, there was no production in you know, heavy industry, there were no uh, sort of uh, plants and so on before the industrial revolution. Um, Dr. Zahur alluded to in a very indirect way, but I think she also says this, uh, I heard her saying this in an earlier uh, paper called the Agricultural Revolution. And there's an article on the website that she kindly has put up. Uh, I, I would recommend that you read it because there's in it quite a lot of reference to agricultural industry there. She has alluded to something interesting, and that is that uh, uh, these, uh, this research of people like the Baitar and so on seem to be strategic. It's not open, it's not sort of, oh, well, let me go and enjoy myself like some of our professors like to do. They get the university to pay them uh, to follow their own hobbies. 
there was a bit of constraints, like the constraints today for funding. You cannot do research without being funded. Uh, and, and therefore you are directed to where, which area you have to. There are priority areas that get to research. And, and I seem to notice that with the Muslim uh, uh, scholars and, and those who went into industry, uh, it was a very good point that Dr. Zagora had mentioned, that, that he actually there is this business of uh, uh, constraint to do something useful. So uh, in his case, it should be sort of useful food and, and hence uh, uh, th there is an element of therapy. So there is a bias towards useful food production. With, uh, uh, and and that, that is a, a very interesting area to, uh, to look at. And I, I tried to explore it a bit further. I found that in, in many wars, perhaps has something to do with the word Amr al in, in Islam. There is this useful deed. And you find it in many places in the Quran, which comes in immediately after the word faith. In, uh, about Iman, those who have faith and do good deeds. This concept of good deeds seems to be a very good constraining and it's a strategic direction that if you want to express your religiosity and you want God to be happy with you, you have to have an output to your faith. To me as an engineer, it appeared like sort of, uh, well, faith in Iman is like an input, like the petrol you put in your car. And then of course, when you, that is for a purpose. Right, so you strengthen your faith, your connection with God, uh, and then what do you do with it? Uh, it has to be out, but the car must move somewhere, it has to be useful. And if the car doesn't move, there's no point in putting petrol in it, spend all your money for nothing. Hence, uh, there, is a, there is an output. So the output is useful deed. And this useful deed seems to, in fact, embrace a lot of the output that these Muslim uh, scholars, you know, in sciences and so on, and even in industry. It, it has to be useful to whom? It's useful to the environment, the then environment, not to the dead people, not to the angels, not to God, not to the jinn, not to... It, it's got to be useful to the people who are living there in society, humanity in general, and of course to animals and plants, so it's useful output. That concept, I think, is probably uh, is a bit problematic now, many of it's very much seen, you know, and... and, uh, uh, and so that, that's just a quick... Uh, I've also found out that there's a... Uh, seem to be an uh, industri industrial process and industry here and there. They were not only just driven by business. And even scientific research has been supported uh, uh, by, by, by uh, charities. The concept of awqaf, it has transcended the idea of just giving waqaf to do a mosque like we do now. You do a charity to build a mosque. Mosque was considered as a means of something. So you get the output of the mosque, must be education, or must be again developing society and so on. And so these awqaf, 